Welcome to Adventures in Comics and Games, Strixhaven School of Mages, set booster box opening with Avram and Donovan. From Adventures in Comics and Games, we have pre-orders still available for Strixhaven products. We have set booster boxes for $115.99 plus, I'm sorry, $114.99 plus tax. And then we have collector's boxes for $249.99 plus tax. And we're um, almost out of those. Yep. Uh, and then draft booster boxes for uh, $99.99 plus tax. And then we do have theme boosters and stuff like that still available. And then we also have tons of strict saving supplies. So. Maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So we're going to get into opening it up. Also, just to let everyone know, in every pack there is a mystical archive card. And then some packs of, of set booster boxes are going to have cards from the list, and the list changes a little bit every every set. So I actually don't even know what's fully in the list. I know Kozlik got put in there, which is pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and get into the first pack. Thanks for joining us. This is always so much fun. And, of course, we got the art series, yeah, pretty art cards, cards, and... Token. token interesting how they uh the backs will we'll add will ads but they do it like so it looks like a magic card back so no that's not a misprint people and land and then every pack i believe has a lesson card which is the new mechanic and let's see here so our first rare is wither bloom command which is pretty good and our first mystical archives d spark so how do those mythical archives work again? So a mystical archive cards, uh, they're not legal in standard. They are legal in draft though, and like sealed. So if you get them in those formats, you can still play them. Uh, and then they're just reprints essentially, and they're legal in the formats that they are legal in. Awesome. Yeah, I like how they're always adding different things into the sets, little different things to collect, art stuff. I can see on these artist series cards. They're not quite artist proofs, but they're a lot more affordable. And I can see people sending them in to have the actual artists do things on the back, and they make them a lot more valuable and really neat to collect. I've been, been there looking are, at a lot of that stuff. You can pull some of those uh, art series cards that are signed. Ooh! It's uh, I think, I think it's like one in a box. Oh, that's kind of cool. I can't remember the. So is it is it artist signed or like a printing sign? It's like a it's like a gold printing of the signature. So it's not okay. technically artist signed, but it's like. A signature series, I think is what they're calling it. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, oh, there's a the rip tab. They did that again. Oh, my goodness. They actually did that. Oh. Don't need to necessarily cut them up with scissors anymore. Oh, wow. So, I, I, the art is just always attracted me to this game. This is the... Uh, that's the lesson that comes in, this, in the pack. So, how so, do lessons work again? So, that's the symbol for lesson. Uh, lessons are cards that are in your sideboard, and there's a mechanic called learn. And when you cast cards with the learn ability, uh, you can grab a lesson card from your sideboard and add it to your hand. And then, uh, oh, and we got our first list card, and it's Liliana the Last Hope, which is a pretty sick pool. Very nice. Yeah. So, yeah, again, how learn works is when you do a card with the learn mechanic, you add a lesson card from your sideboard. If you choose not to add a lesson card from your sideboard, you can, uh, I believe it's discard and then draw a card. So it's like a, it's like a loot also. That's awesome. So that's a solid pull right there so far. Let's get this stuff out of the way. We'll get the routine going. Oh, pull tabs. I miss opening the old old starter decks because they had that. I didn't have to worry about it. Oh, so just beautiful artwork. Shinies, of course, we must have the shinies. Yep. I'll just kind of throw these out there, get through the commons, uncommons. I heard land are good. Land's, oh, yeah, land's land, good, land's right? Pretty good. Yeah. Those are the new uh, lands of completing the uh, cycle from oh, uh, Shadows over Innistrad. Negate. Also, you can pull more than one rare or mythic in this pack. This one actually had two rares. Oh, good yeah. call. Nice. So there's like a wild card slot that can be like any rarity. Oh, and wow. then you can 
uh, sometimes pull another, I think you can pull like up to three or four rares, wow. including the mystical archive. So and that that's in good. in the set booster in specifically. The set booster, yeah. Okay. It's not guaranteed. It happens once in a while. Very nice. And once again, beautiful land. Just the artwork overall. They're just up in the game. Yeah. The flavor so of the much. set's fantastic. It's super cool. Yeah, it's it's of course not ripping off any oh, you know, yeah, licensed no. <laughs> products at all. You know, counter spell. I heard that's good. Yeah, that's pretty good. And shiny. I mean, does it really matter what it is? It's shiny. Well, yeah. Okay, it's got to go in the deck. Yeah. But sure. Also, the thing that I really like about the set. So every school of the college has their own like mascot type token. And I think they did a really cool idea with them. Even the ones that are like reprints, like the uh, like elementals, elementals have been around forever. The the way that they look in it are super cool. I'm, I really like the inklings. I uh, they're just the design of this. I mean, you can always complain about things that are too powerful or break, you know, or they don't get fixed soon enough, or they get fixed too soon. But honestly, in the scheme of things, lightning bolt. And foil, and foil cultivate. cultivate. Oh, and, and another list card. Another list card, Spined Thopter. Strict Proctor is also really good. It's like a new, uh, like, like Stax Hate Bear style card. Yeah. So as I mentioned, um, it's just you know, let's let's not beat anybody up for it could have been better. Yeah. Let's look at the amazing <clears throat> design, the flavor, this the way everything goes together the opportunities to play so many different formats and beautiful cards now i mean many layers of beautiful cards not just i mean uh, just the straight artwork uh and then the design the flavor of of just how they're they're getting the game so deep like you know they didn't do any pathways in this one did they yeah. no, no but, but that was that type of concept was just a huge there are, addition uh, to the game in my mind there are modal flip cards in here again though Oh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. I really I really think that I is like the future as, of the game, honestly. Yeah. I think them including that continuously is really good. Yeah. I think it makes interesting play style. Oh, lore hold command. Throw possibility. Hey, always the thrill of possibility when you open up a box, right? Uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing is it's it's a playing game. Yeah, there's going to be luck involved. But skill should be skill intensive, and you should have options. You shouldn't just run out of options immediately and then just lose. You know, yeah, you shouldn't necessarily always windmill slam something off the top to win when you should have lost. But, you know, occasionally it's not a, a bad thing to spice up the game a little bit. But just yeah. being able to play with everything that you draw and have, you know, the opportunity to make decks unique because... Inquisition of Causal, like the Mystical Archive one. Yeah. That's the art for it. That's beautiful. Actually, let's just show that one again. This is... Look at that. Imagine what they would do on the back of that. Somebody would do... Anyways, I just enjoy uh, the flavor, function, and artwork all rolled up into into one. It's just so much... Makes it so much fun. And I'm curious to see if we're going to open any misprints this time. Because don't forget, everybody, we are fans of misprints. And if you open up any of the newer stuff or older stuff or have anything in your collection, we're definitely interested in taking a look, making an offer. And if you don't want us to buy it, we might be able to consult with you to help you deal with it yourself if it is something rare enough. And I know Strixhaven, we've already started seeing misprints come out. Yep. A lot of these, um, what do you... Mystical Archive. It? Thank you, Mystical Archive. There's so many different card types now, I just feel... Like I'm going to mix them up with the last one. But we're already seeing a lot of missed cuts where you can see another card or it's way off center. Um, there's a tab. And stuff like that. So if you do open up anything that looks really weird, um, we can help out with that and possibly make an offer. But it's understandable if you want to hold on to it. But it's a really neat aspect of the game. And with the newer releases, they're printing so much stuff. It's not that there's more misprints. That it's really just that they're making so many more cards now. There's the opportunity for it to happen, and don't think that they're garbage and throw them away. If anything, at this point, if it's really crazy, you just got extra value out of your Two deck. Two mythics. Oh, and there's and the the Inquisition yep. of Kozilek. So this is what I was talking about. This is two mythics 
and a rare, technically, because that's a rare mystical archive yep. card. So that's, you know, that's a three great rare card. mythics. <laughs> that is such an amazing card uh, for... That's also a flip card. Oh, nice. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Card's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Wow. Also, everyone, uh, at the end of the video, we'll have some announcements just uh, about cool things that are happening at the shop that we're super excited about, and we kind of want to just give you guys a little, little oh, teaser. Oh, we, can't, we can't tell them now? Uh, maybe know. one thing? Just one okay, thing? Maybe, maybe, maybe like one thing. So, we are in the process of doing some exciting things at the store. One of them is we are ex expanding and changing up our play space a little bit to accommodate uh, social distancing, plus uh, just having more available space for play in yeah. the future. So that's not yeah. too far away where we can yeah. let people play in the store again, and I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it's uh, probably right around the corner, honestly. With it, with it, we're in California, so... Uh, the last announcement that we heard is most likely June 15th with, you know, still some, like, uh, you know, social distancing procedures in, in place and stuff like that. But still, super exciting. And uh, when we get closer to that, we'll make an announcement about a, some very exciting, some very exciting events that we're going to be doing. Oh, yeah. Gee, you didn't even mention uh, that stuff that uh, has been making us all work really hard. Or is that going to be at the end of the video? That's going to be the end of the video. <laughs> oh. They, got, they, got to, they have to stay. <laughs> oh, you got to stay and listen. Oh, we got double uh, double major, divine gambit, and, of course, shiny and tokens. Anything neat in here or real flavorful? Uh, double major is a pretty sweet card, actually. It's a uh, clone effect that you have to do on the stack in response to the... So it's kind of interesting because we haven't really seen one like that. It's usually a permanent, like, kind of the Wow, divine. yeah. It makes a clone token. That's really neat. So basically, like for the old school players, think about it is you fork your creature to get a second copy of it, but it's blue green, which makes sense for the, the color flavor. That's actually kind of neat. But it specifically is a legendary. Legendary. Hmm. That doesn't work in Commander at all. Well, if it's That'll a never come up. <laughs> if it's a legendary, the, the token's non legendary that you create. So you can do it on any. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I misunderstood that. No. So you can double any of the cre uh, any oh, I can't bear this one. Uh, Professor Zoomancy. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so you can you can actually uh, then just double any any creature, copy any creature you play, and if it's legendary, it doesn't go away because it's the token yeah. is non legendary. Thank you for catching me on that. Uh, they're just making sure that enough of the flavor text is on there to cover the abilities and stuff. And Genius Mastery and Duress. I love that heart for Duress. Oh, that's beautiful. I can't wait to see a foil of that. And but then again, I think I say that about all the foils. Yeah. Warm another, Power Stone. Another Mystical Archive. Nice. Let me make sure we get... Uh, yeah, this is nice. We're getting like two to three equivalent of rares per yeah. pack almost. That's kind of neat. Because of the Mystical Archive card... It's usually like your your chances of getting two rares are pretty high, and that's I mean that's with regular draft boosters, that's with set boosters, collector boosters are incredible value because <laughs> you're getting three mystical archive cards per pack plus like an extended rare and a bunch. It's 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 nuts. <laughs> oh wow, I wonder at what point. I mean I I have no idea. This is just conjecture, but what point the uh, art series cards are going to be foil? Uh, I've been wondering about that myself. I that'd be sweet. Yeah. So I have a bunch of the R series cards. I really like them. I have the Modern Horizons full set. Ooh, nice. Uh, Magnum one. Opus, Magnum uh, Opus mythic. mythic, Strategic Planning, which is an uncommon mystical... Uh, yeah, keep the, forgetting the Mystical names. Archive. Mystical Archive. And then Chemistry's Inside, that's a list card. Yep. I was like, I remember that one. Yeah, Gil's Ravnica. Card's good. Yeah. Drawn Crips cards. Different. Drawn cards. That's what you want to do in magic. Essentially, flashback on it. Jumpstart. Which is yeah. <laughs> Jumpstart's more than just a product that doesn't exist like, outside of Target. <laughs> right. Speaking hey, of Jumpstart, yeah, I was say, like, speaking just... of Jumpstart, we actually got Jumpstart boxes in, and we have quite a bit. So, uh, 
you want to well, get some jump start quite a down. bit in comparison to what we've yeah. had in the recently it will go quick once yeah. people know about it adventurous impulse Ooh, foil four. eliminate and then token 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 uh, one that's really cute <laughs> yeah destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less yeah, really pretty in foil and then adventurous impulse and so once again just such so good it is only 30 packs in a set booster but you get that's a lot true. of extra stuff and the they price isn't even too. With the extra stuff. Yeah, and the and the price. Honestly, we've been able to get our price down a little bit um, to to be more competitive. But as with almost everything else, the draft boosters are yeah. running low in stock from the distributors. Wizards had you know dis distribution issues with the you know the COVID still going on. It's uh, everything is just harder to get and ship. This card is sweet. Oh, why do you like it so much? Uh, so the back side, it's a sorcery on the back, and uh, it costs two less for every creature you sacrifice. So it actually, for commander specifically, uh, you can reduce commander tax, I, I believe. Oh, wow. <laughs> With, Double strike, yeah. magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, return target non-legendary creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And then on the flip side... There's a, that spell. Awaken the Blood Avatar. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This spell costs two less to cast for each creature sacrificed this way. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. Create a 3-6 black and red avatar creature token with haste. And whenever this creature attacks, it deals three damage to each opponent. That's mean. Yeah, it's a sweet <laughs> card for commanders. Yeah. I think it has legs somewhere in standard or possibly like pioneer and uh and modern and like some type of aristocrat style deck. Um haven't really seen too much about it, but as as a commander that card's been really popular. People have been talking about it a lot. I I can see why. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, Dina. Yeah. Dina's actually one of my favorite cards from the new set. She's one of the uncommon legendaries. What do you think about the commons in the set overall? Uh, so the commons in the set overall... All right, so this set has a very... Primal, primal command. command. This set, to me, has a very similar power feel. Like, like the, the level of power in the set feels very similar to Throne to me. Hmm. Um, where there's a lot of cards in the uncommon and common slot that are very playable and they work really well together. That's I've been great. drafting this a lot on Arena and it's been a blast to play. I haven't had, like, I mean, Zendikar Rising, I played a little bit and then kind of got bored of it. Kaldheim, same thing, got bored of really fast. But with Strixhaven, I feel like it just feels good to play magic again with it. That's awesome. Yeah, like I wow. actually want to play. Manifestation Sage yeah. 4 with a 4 hybrid. That's crazy. Yeah, there's like a, a, a set of those, of like for each one of them. Where it's like four hybrid. They're all rare. I like the cycles like that. Yeah. Adds to the flavor. Yeah, they did a lot. Also, a lot of like. It feels like they did a good job balancing all the different. I, I believe they're calling them colleges. Ah, uh, yes. Um, they did a pretty good job of balancing the power level between them all. Like. Each one of them does a certain thing that's really good, but it doesn't feel like any of them are like way above and beyond just stand alone. I mean, it could be different with oh, other wow. sets involved, but that's time warp. That's gonna. Oh my goodness! I want to see the actual card. You see the Japanese version. <laughs> uh, that's right. So the collector's boosters have an op opportunity for the the Japanese You're stuff, guaranteed right? Guaranteed one Japanese alternate art in each box Brain and freeze. then you can um, pull additional copies in like the other slots for the Mystical Archive and then like the foil slot that's guaranteed Whirlwind Denial also Brain Freeze is a pretty good reprint yeah it's been a while since that's that's been around CEDH uh, commonly played card <laughs> in blue form yep I always, always enjoy mm. this. <laughs> Even the ugly ones are still pretty. Oh, equivalent to another, er, another rare there. Yeah, because the last one that you can you pull can be a rare. That's a flip card too. It's a oh. wrath on the backside. 
Oh, yeah, oh. no, yeah. Choose a creature or planeswalker, then destroy all other creatures and planeswalkers. That's pretty sweet, because now it's just you. And That's a double. That. Three rares in that pack, actually. Plus that, and, and of course, shiny. That was a, another three rare pack. So yeah, even though they're thirty packs, it evens out overall because you have the chance of like pulling anywhere from like one. I think it's like one to four. Like yeah, we still have some of these available. Um, yeah. Do we have any draft boosters left, or those uh, all gone? We do have some draft boosters left um, for, for pre-orders. Um, I can't remember the exact quantity off the top of my head. Call the shop. Yep. But yeah, we have, uh, yeah, call the shop. But we do have some available still, and we do still have uh, some number of collector boxes. Ooh, ooh, Galazeth Prismari. I like that card a lot. <laughs> and regular Cultivate, cultivate Foil. Uh, how, what do you think about the Commander decks? Because they're basically five, so one the, for each school? Yeah. or uh, There's one for each school. The Commander decks this year are the... All right, so every year they always have, like, the big Commander product. This year, this is the big commander ride where there's five decks. There's one for each um, uh, each college, school, whatever. Uh, and they actually did a lot of interesting things with these decks where it felt like they were a lot more playable out of the box than they have been in the past. And, That's good. Yeah, like, and that, and, like, some of the reprints that they did are really good. Uh, they did, a, like, a pretty decent job. Um, there's nothing like super insane out of them, but there's like just good solid cards across the board. A lot of good reprints. Yeah, there's Ooh, some. Like, Blood. Ooh, that's really great. There's a lot of good reprints. Like there's a, a elixir of immortality, the artifact from like the different cores. That's for a game that you can play with the booster packs. It's it's kind of neat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of good reprints in in those decks. That and the new legendaries that they provide with the decks are really cool. I really like the Lorehold one, which is strange to say, because <laughs> usually Boros and Commander is not that good. But uh, their new approach with uh, Red, Red White in this deck, and in the set in general, is really, really refreshing. It feels like they're not just like... It's not just, oh, equipment matters. <laughs> Which is getting yeah. really boring. I left this one out, so if oh, we're in Cody. between, yes, I talked Cody definitely into Cody. This deck, by the way, <laughs> that's awesome. Infuriate, but I left this one out just in case you want to kind of. Is there so Galazeth Prismari is one of the cards I'm most excited about. It is very the the abilities of the card are very reminiscent of Urza, and I think most people know how powerful that card is. There's a difference. Uh, the artifacts only tap for mana that can be used for uh, instants and sorceries, but that's fine because you're having access to red instead of just blue. So I think it kind of pays off. There's a lot of people talking about it in the, the EDH community and stuff like that. That card's also really sweet. Blade Historian. What, uh, what do you like about that? Oh, Urza's so, Rage. Urza's Rage. Oh, and then you got a foil... Uh, basic card region. So Blade Historian gives all attacking creatures Devil Strike. Beanstalk Giant. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, Blade Historian is just a cool card because it gives all attacking creatures uh, Devil Strike. So what people wow. are doing with it is they swing with a bunch of stuff with Winota, and it's a human. So Blade Historian gets cheated into play, so all those, those creatures that we're attacking have Devil Strike now. Wow. That's pretty special. Yeah. That's the thing, like, uh, there's so many, like, interesting and cool cards in this set, and I think they just did a really good job just designing it. That card's also pretty good. But, uh, like I said, oh, this card is sweet. This card's nuts, actually. <laughs> One narrow keg. The front part is Regrowth. really good. The back is whatever. But, so its ability is, whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, they may pay, uh, you may pay, oh, whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, they may pay two. If they don't, you may copy that spell and you can choose new targets for it. So if they're wow. it taxes their spells and if they don't pay the tax, you copy it. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's it's only five mana. mana. So five mana it's colorless. So it goes in yeah. any deck you want that if well, any deck that you feel your opponent is going to uh, 
well, not like to see you do that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what almost everyone is stopping your opponent from doing things without you getting to do them too is kind of fun. Let's see here. Oh, that's uh, body, body of research. research. Makes a huge remorse. fractal token and the size of your library. Wow. So what do you think about the box so far? We're, we're winding down on the amount of packs here. So far it's been pretty decent. Uh, the Liliano definitely helped out. Uh, the Mystical Archive cards are just really solid overall. We've also had a pretty decent amount of Mythics in this, in this box. We had Jotty, we had uh, the, the Gals of Prismari, we had uh, Kazmina, and like Primal Command is technically a Mythic also. And then just like, there's a bunch of cool stuff. Like, I think it's been a pretty solid box overall. I haven't seen too many boxes that were, like, not good. I've been, I've been watching a lot, a lot of openings. So. Let's see here. That's a new uh, Steal Your Creature card. Snakes and Veil's pretty good also. It's a sweet reprint. So this one, this for each side. opponent gain control of up to one target creature or planeswalker that player controls with mana value three or less. Yeah. So they're no longer referring to it as converted mana yeah, cost? Yeah, it's no longer converted mana cost, it's mana value. It's, it's the same thing, but uh, they found in their uh, research and surveys apparently that converted mana cost was confusing to new players, so this is their fix. Definitely. Change it to something else people won't understand will always make it different. Uh, is I mean, honestly, yeah, they're not wrong. <laughs> they're, 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 what's the, uh, honestly, it's not much of a difference. More people like, know what converted mana cost was because they've been playing so long and then they could teach the new players. Yeah. So now everybody is, what does that mean, instead of just the new players? So it's fair, right? It's Everybody's on the same foot, you know, same footing. Of course, I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. This is a difficult game to oh, keep on top yeah. of and to make sure that everything is going the way it should um, and to protect the game at the same time. It's so difficult. There's no way. I yeah. mean, I, I, no one else has really managed to do it like they have. And so, I, you know, I joke about it, but this is an amazing game to play, an amazing community. I, I just... The, the beautiful art, the stories, the friends, the stories we make with the beautiful friends, yeah. you know, it's just this is it's it's such a you know large community of wonderful people and playing a wonderful game and you know of course we all like to joke about what could be different yeah like i could have opened the better box you know <laughs> um i think the box is pretty good uh, i think it's pretty yeah. solid but yeah there's always there's always there's always you know, like the insane boxes so yes that's just, that's just how it is <laughs> and sometimes that just does happen Oh, approach the second time. That's pretty oh, cool. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's solid. Also, Colon Ritual. That card is sick. Colon Ritual is really powerful, I think. What do you like about that one? All right, so it's a board wipe for uh, two CMC and lower cards. So it hits uh, Mana Rocks in Commander. Oh, And then wow. you add mana in either black or green to your mana pool for every card destroyed. That's pretty sweet. So, so yeah, it's, a, uh, it's essentially uh, free or, or potentially net gain of mana with throwing your opponent into, well, your opponent's... Yeah. I don't into know about, duress. I don't know about everyone else, but every time I play Commander, all my opponents open uh, Mana Crypt Soul Ring, and I don't, so... <laughs> yeah, it's only fair if you then smash them all yeah. with one spell and net gain off of it. It's totally fair. Nothing wrong with that at all. The game Ooh. is... Alright, that's uh, Shadrick's Silver Quill. He is one of the new dragons. That's the Borderless. Shocking. <laughs> And that's the uh, the borderless uh, uh, of the so all five of the legendary drag the elder dragons that come in the set come borderless along with the uh, planeswalkers. Oh, very nice. And I believe there's so this is a four white black three colorless legendary creature elder dragon flying double strike at the beginning of combat on your turn you may choose two each mode must target a different player. Target player creates a 2 1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. Second one is target player draws a card and loses one life. And the third mode is 
target player puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. Hmm. Yeah. Seems good. Alrighty, we have two left. Would you like to tease uh, a little bit more on the announcements, just so yeah. we don't make people yeah. stay too much so, longer past the uh, the last pack? Yeah. So, the shop, for a while, we have been trying to do a remodel. Well, we have officially started to do that remodel. So, some of you guys have come in and seen it, and everyone's been like, whoa, this looks way different. And we've gotten really positive feedback about it. We've got new comic tables. We're getting some new fixtures made. Uh, all t all types of stuff. Um, Gee, they they can just come in and yeah, see what sure we've already are. done, right? Yeah, come, It'd come be pick great up some to see boxes. <laughs> or or some packs, <laughs> or, or just say hi. Yeah, and also, welcome yeah. home. You know, we yeah. will welcome you home again. We'd we'll love to see our regulars. <laughs> We'd love to see anybody. Yeah. Honestly, this has been a tough time to just you know have to deal with all this stuff and we just this is for the community and, and yeah. uh, we'd love to see you guys come down and and gals and and uh just pretty much anybody i mean honestly come in say hi and check out the place we've been offering a lot of new stuff picking up a lot of collections to kind of get out some really good cards comics oh my goodness the comics yeah, that's about to get into that oh yeah so one of the other things besides just the remodel is we are expanding our trade paperback section we are adding a manga section we're expanding our back issues we've expanded our new comic wall uh and we have picked up a few really 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 impressive and big and whole oh, oh. <laughs> chris is gonna freak out <laughs> Gee, I don't know why. That's the card he wants the most from the set. So, foil <laughs> extended art Belladros Witherbloom. One black, one green, five colorless legendary creature Elder Dragon. Four, four flying. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a one, one black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, you gain one life. Pay ten life, untap all lands you control activate only once each turn yeah you'll probably win that turn so that's that's enough yeah exactly uh yeah chris is definitely putting that into his deck <laughs> yeah that's pretty um, sweet but yeah going back into it though uh we were expand we're expanding our trade uh trade paperbacks or we're adding a manga section new comics our all ages section our back issues uh our board i mean literally everything in the store is expanding in some aspect uh where the play area is going to be much better. Uh, it's going to be located towards the back of the store, and we've redone. Uh, I mean, if people you come have in, to see yeah, it. You have to see it. It looks. It looks so it's, much we're better. We're like halfway done, and it looks so good already. Um, but yeah, definitely come by and check us out. Um, for I mean, a lot of people that have come by the shop already, they've walked in and immediately like, wow. This is so much better. This is so different and refreshing. Uh, and I mean, like, so I've been here for four years, and I'm just like, it makes me real happy and real proud. We've been, we've been picking up a ton of collections and putting out, you know, revised dual lands and oh, yeah. lots of reserve list cards. You know, we're still taking trade ins, and you can trade in good stuff for good stuff, or you know, more smaller, newer things for older stuff. Basically, whatever you knew us for, we're still doing that. Yep. But we're bigger and better than ever. Thank you so much for watching. I want to make sure Donovan wants to say anything else. Nope, we just I'm, appreciate your time. Thank you so much.